Hey friends, happy Friday. It is Sonya here on the vlog from Junk Monkey Paint Company. Of course, you guys know I do vlog uploads here showing you uh, behind the scenes at the Junk Monkey every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday, taking your most popular questions and helping you face to face with any questions that you guys throw at me and want to maybe get a little bit better when it comes to your painting, the stressing in this case is what I'm going to talk about today, and just your techniques overall, your ideas, your inspiration, and sometimes you need a little extra help. So this is a great platform form for us to be able to connect on on a more personal basis and for me to be able to go in depth more because when you're following me over on Facebook uh, at Jug Monkey Paint Company I'm doing entire projects and so in the vlog today I wanted to break down one thing in particular and that is talk about my sand pad um, sand pads okay so yeah you may um, I don't know, there might be very few videos that you've ever seen me do without holding a sand pad in my hand because, true story, brushes are as common, shabby chip brushes of course, are as common as sand pads on my channels here because I'm a shabby painter, loves to distress. So I wanted to talk with you guys today just about, you know, the kind of sand pads I use, how I use them, why I use the ones I do, and also how to reuse them because as a repurposer, Somebody who likes to keep things to go, hmm, I can find something to do with that. I'm also the same way about my sand pads, hence this is why this is just one stash of them that I keep and I'm always grabbing to, right? So first of all, the kind of sand pad that I like to use that I have for sale on our website at jugmonkeypaint.com is a medium coarse grit sand pad, okay? So basically, when you feel it, it's probably going to be like about an 80 grit sand pad, which means it's going to be much more rougher to your hands. So the way it works when you're picking up sandpaper is the lower the number of the grit mentioned on the package, the higher coarse it is. Does that make sense? Like the higher, like it's going to feel rougher to your hands. So these are like a 60 to 80 grit sand pad right here. These are my favorites because as a girl who loves to distress, I like to be able to, like let's use this as an example, I'm gonna take my sand pad and I like to be able to, when I pull it over my paint, that it doesn't take a whole lot of like muscle and elbow grease, right? I want it to grab that paint and rip it off, leaving me with these beautiful time-worn distress marks. And you guys can add as many as you want into your piece. Now, when I first started working with uh, furniture, and I've been a furniture painter now for over 10 years, um, I use sandpaper. And I guess with anything that, you know, just gets better with time and you get just, you know, wisdom comes and you're like, why am I doing that, right? And so, I mean, being uh, a furniture painter is a very physical, definitely a physical activity. I get people who message me all the time going, girl, I see you do that on live on Facebook all the time, painting a project. Um, every day and then I try it and you make it look so easy because it is very very physical right and so one of the things especially if you're using a sand a piece of paper sandpaper uh, it can get very very rough and harsh on your uh, fingers on your fingernails on your skin right because you're holding it in your hand and when you're sliding a piece of sandpaper do you ever notice oh just thinking about it makes me like kind of cringe a little bit because I hate it when um, when I rip it across my skin um, or just it, it starts to fall apart and before you know it are you like rubbing with your hand are you rubbing with the paper and the paper gets all funky and it get, just gets worn out and it shreds and it tears and it falls on the floor so if that is you right now with your shredded uh, sandpaper please invest in a sand pad okay so it has this foam in the middle of it with the sandpaper that is basically attached to it okay and it's not gonna fall off of it it's it is stuck on there so when you do you got when you do use it you have a great grip on it you can hold the sides on it and you can really go at it now remember on your sand pad you also want to make use of the sides and in fact a lot of times you will see me do that when I want to harness a little, little more power because when it's flat you got that flat surface uh, to work with right on your sand pad but when you turn it to the side and then you use your momentum and you really start to push into it you can really get some nice distress marks that start to happen um, at your mercy meaning that you are in full control right and it doesn't make wide distress marks it makes those little ones that we like to see on uh, you know on our projects right so I make use of the whole thing but this is going to be so much easier to be able to handle in your hand you're not going to rip the nail polish off your fingernails in the same way you would if you were old, holding a piece of sandpaper okay so i got rid of sandpaper a long time ago and i love these okay so these are the ones that are on my website now i do keep them though all right and this is why i keep them because the grit that i told you that i like to be able to stress at very easy to stress at because it is a lot of work this helps when you have a high grit sand pad to be able to rip the paint for you so it's less elbow grease because more of the work is done by the actual sand block itself right 
But when I get to the point where maybe I'm ready to seal a piece or uh, maybe I want a piece sand it but I don't want so much distressing, that is when I go take one that has the grit that I've been using over and over and over where it's really worn down. Like I'm trying to see if I have one here that might show you. And you know what I mean because you start to see your, let's, let's, let me just kind of show you my sand pad stash here. So you can see they all have varying degrees. Now I use this on a blue piece. I use this on a yellow piece. So true story, as I paint uh, with all the different colors of our paints, if I'm trying to distress something and I already have a green, some green on it, I'll actually use this green sand pad on a new green piece because the green on here, if any of the, the dust or any of the paint that's in the pores falls off, it's not gonna make a, a difference, right? And my furniture that I like to do is always distress the time ward and honestly, if a little bit of pink uh, paint pigment fell off into a new piece, I'm probably gonna love that and embrace that characteristic that I just made it something really, really cool and just really, really neat, right? But also know that at any given time when I'm ready, I can go ahead and take these to my painter's sink. I can go ahead and basically wash them. I'll rub them up against each other in some like uh, just warm water and dish detergent. And because they are foam, look what happens, right? You see all that dust that's falling out of that right now? I'm catching it on camera. This is the stuff that you can release from the pores, right? So I do, I can actually wash these over again and make use of them um, if I want to. Right now, I'm just kind of been throwing them into a bin until I get to them. But at the same time, like I say, I'll just pick out a color like right here. This is like raising the bar right here on it, right? So the next time I'm ready to uh, polish a piece versus more or less versus less distressing. So this is where I'm talking about. So the grit in here has been filled. You saw it, right? You saw it come out of the last sand block that I um, squeezed and the cut on camera, the dust coming out and the paint pigments. So it's blocked with uh, a lot of that paint right here. So what that means is when I use a sand block, I'm not gonna get the same grit as if I found uh, a sand block that is still that nice and black or you know charcoal color and is really, really gritty because this one has the porous cloth. So therefore it's gonna rip less paint. Does that make sense? So that's how I reuse them. I can wash them in my sink and use them over and over again, but I like to use them for a polish base. So for example, on this piece right here, let me find one, all right. So this is a sand pad that obviously has like a white or an antique lace on it from the last time I used it. So let's say for example, I showed you how I used a sand pad that was in relatively still, had lots of life into it and I ripped paint off of it. So in this case, I would reuse a sand pad that has the same color on it. And now because the pores are clogged, I call it that way, right? So you can see it really worn down. Think about like, you know, if you're trying to file your nails with a nail file that you've used a whole lot before, right? That that grit that's on it has been worn from all the times that you filed your nails and you just don't get that edge, uh, you know, that on your nail anymore because you've, you've worn it down, you've used it. Same thing with your sand pad, okay? So if you've worn it down and you've filed your, your pieces, you've sanded your pieces a little bit, now you have more of a polisher, not necessarily something that's gonna distress a whole lot, right? So now I can use some something like this and reuse it because I love to reuse and now I can use it to polish my piece and it's not going to rip big pieces off of it and I don't have to press into it and what it's doing right now is basically smoothing out my layer of paint oh and I love it love it love it love it the cool thing about our chalky style paint is that of course you guys know if you don't seal it you have a chalkboard on your hands I did a created a chalkboard yesterday in fact on our um Facebook Live right here went all wild with it, added some bling bling, showed you guys how to do a fun uh, piece right there. Go back and watch that if you want. But the moment that you do seal it, then you have a fully finished piece of furniture that is absolutely sealed. But the step between when you finish painting and you seal could be a polish step for you. Maybe you want to get rid of some of those brush hairs that might be stuck into your paint. Uh, maybe you had a fly that came to visit you while your piece was, was drying, right? Those things happen. Maybe the wind blew and I don't know, maybe a leaf or something stuck into your paint, right? I let my piece finish drying completely and then I can do a polish. So I can pick up myself like a really, really, um, a sand block that doesn't have a whole lot, lot of grit, like maybe a 120. Remember I told you at the beginning, the higher the number, the less, the less coarse it's gonna be, okay? The smoother your sand block is going to be. But in my case, I don't have to go and buy a 120 sand block because I'm gonna reuse this coarse one that I had, except now I'm gonna give it new life as a polisher and keep it 
and that's one less thing that I have to buy, right? So that's why I make use of the one grit that I have on my website, and um, I just use it over and over. And just giving that polishing effect right there, it's nice and smooth. Any impurities have fell off at this point, and now I am ready to go ahead and seal, whether I choose my Monkey Shine or my Banana Peel uh, water-based poly, right? So again, hopefully this, this video helps you guys to really understand um, why you should keep your sand blocks, hello, and make use of them again, um, and give them whole new life, just like that piece of furniture that you're working on, to give it a whole new chapter and lease in life as well. So thank you for joining me for this vlog, and uh, let's see, our next one will be here on Tuesday of next week, where I stop by in person and talk about one subject, one thing, to be able to give you guys some inspiration out there. So hopefully your day is going great. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. Make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss another upload. Uh, I'll let you know anytime we do uploads here to our YouTube channel, and I would love it if you would leave a comment below. Did you learn something new today? Are you now going to save your sand pad? Tell me below. I'll be watching for your comments. All right, guys. Take care. Bye.